Hello and welcome to Prop Live, your weekly prop and costume making Q&A session. I'm Bill Duran from Punished Props, and today is a day like most others where I just uh, answer your prop and costume making questions. I'm flying solo again this week, um, but yeah, I'm getting ready to answer your questions. As always, you can submit your technique Prop and costume making questions over at punishedprops.com slash live. In fact, if you're watching live and you have a question, you can submit it right now. And it will show up in our little email inbox. And then Brittany will put it in the show notes and then I will answer it. Oh, it's a good thing I just played my own video back. Um, here's what it looks like. We got the, the everything you need to know about our live stuff happens over there, and there's a little form right there to fill out, uh, so that you can submit a question over to us here, and we will answer them. And I will be answering a bunch of questions uh, here very shortly. But first, first some uh, housekeeping. I got some things to talk about. I have things to talk about. <laughs> I just, uh, we put up a video on the old YouTube channel from the live, from the shop video we did on Tuesday. I was working on this Dwarven Sword, did some detail stuff on it, did some latex coating on it. I'm really stoked about how that went. The, the video's on our YouTube channel. It's, uh, in case you guys haven't caught on yet, when we do our live streams on Tuesday, those videos get edited down to about 10 minutes. We put them up on our YouTube channel for you guys to watch again later. It's just a condensed version of what goes on during our live stream. Um, some people like that better because they can't catch it live. And also, they don't want to watch three hours of video. So, head on over there. You can see the abbreviated version of all the work we did on this guy. And I have it right here. And I, I did a little bit more work to it off, off the stream. So, it was black with latex on it. And now, it's kind of this uh, bronze-ish color. And what I did was I took some bronze paint, mixed it in with that latex, and then sprayed a bunch on using my critter sprayer. Like so. Ta-da! There's, there's all our little detail parts we did on the handle that I'm really stoked about how they turned out. There's all the raised bits we did on the, the blade right there. Um, yeah, Phoenix Revival in the chat it says, says, watch the live stream. Lots of info. Yeah. That's very, very, we're very thorough on the, uh, on the live stream. Um, so next week on Tuesday, I think I'll, I'll do some finishing work on this. The handle you can see is kind of chewed up from the, um, clamp I've been putting in and that's fine. It's going to get covered. The latex here will overlap that with a piece of leather. We'll barge that down, wrap leather around this to make a nice looking, uh, leather wrapped handle. So we'll do that on the live stream next week. And also, all these raised bits are going to get painted uh, gold, I think. And we'll do that as well. So if you're not following us on Twitch, you should, uh, because then you'll get a notification for when we go live on Tuesday, noon Pacific, and you'll get to see us finish this up. There we go. I have this in a clamp. You can see, kind of, it's in a clamp. <laughs> So that it uh, doesn't touch the ground. I don't want that latex to get disturbed at all before I put the remaining coats on there. So it's just clamped. going to sit there for a week while we wait to uh, work on it. So that's what we've been working on on the, on the old normal old live stream here on Twitch. And again, that video from Tuesday's thing is all up on the old uh, YouTube channel for you guys to check out. All right, what else is going on? Yesterday, I booked my flights to San Francisco because I haven't been there in a month, and clearly I need to go back. <laughs> um, I'm heading to San Francisco for the Bay Area Maker Fair. This is the Maker Fair. Whoop, there it is. In uh, San Mateo? Yeah, San Mateo, California, just south of San Francisco. I will be there, and I don't have a, an, an agenda. I'm just going to go and check it out. I've never been there before. I'm really excited to go see what's going on. Many people that I know will be there, so I'm going to go hang out with them, including the guys over at Tested, my buddy Norm and Joey, and I, maybe I'll get to see Adam. That would be cool. I know he's doing a talk on Sunday 
Um, so I'll be there. I'll go see those guys. Um, my new buddy Joel from the 3D Printing Nerd will be there. Um, Bob Claggett from I Like to Make Stuff. Jimmy DeResta and David Picciuto, three awesome makers who also do a podcast called Making It. If you're not listening to that podcast, you're missing out. Uh, they will all be there, and I'm really excited to meet all of those guys. In fact, I think they're doing some sort of meetup on Saturday that will involve pizza. So I'm excited to go check that out. Uh, Kagar Prop says, I think Will and Adam are both talking. So Will Smith will be there. Not with Tested anymore, but still <laughs> still a nice guy. Uh, I would love to go see him again because he's cool. So yeah, I will be at the my very first ever Bay Area Maker Fair. And I hope some of you guys are there. If you see me, I'll have, probably have this hat on. If you see a bearded weirdo with this hat on, it's probably me. Come say hi. Although I'm willing to bet that there are other lists. Uh, oh, speaking of tested, uh, blur. so I know a lot of guys watch tested's videos. Their YouTube channel is amazing, but they also have a lot of really good articles on their site. Just go to tested.com. Now, I'm a little biased, but this one on 3D modeling is pretty good too. <laughs> if you head on over to tested.com right now, um, I wrote an article called Introduction to 3D Modeling for Prop and Costume Maker. That, that'll be really exciting. So... Maker Fair, what else do I have on my list? Uh, oh, speaking of tested, uh, blur. So I know a lot of guys watch tested's videos. Their YouTube channel is amazing, but they also have a lot of really good articles on their site. Just go to tested.com. Now, I'm a little biased, but this one on 3D modeling is pretty good too. <laughs> If you head on over to tested.com right now, um, I wrote an article called Introduction to 3D Modeling for Prop and Costume Making. So if you're looking to get into 3D modeling for any reason, this is a great place to start. I cover a lot of free options for software, um, a lot of uh, sort of introductory tips and stuff to get you on your way becoming a competent 3D modeler. Um, so yeah, go definitely check that out. I've been writing an article for them every single month this year, and I will continue that trend at least for the rest of this year. I've got some other really great ones over there that, uh, I'm pretty proud of and I'm working on a new one right now. So that's cool. Head on over to tested.com and, uh, check out that article. And, uh, if you like it, tell the guys that tested so because... Uh, then they'll continue to pay me to write for them. Hooray! <laughs> um, all right. You know what? I think that's just about all of the housekeeping I've got. Uh, according to the notes, Willow, our cat, stepped on the keyboard. So that's that's good. <laughs> uh, I'm going to start diving into these questions here, but we could use a few more. If you are watching live, then go to punishedprops.com slash live and submit a question over there. If we run out of questions, then I'm just going to pull the, the chat. I see you guys going right there. I'm going to squeeze some questions out of you guys. Uh, other than that, I'm going to... Uh, let's get started. Um, boop. I saw the first question comes in to us from Travis. What type of latex do you use and where do you get it? Um, so the recommendation for the latex that I use came from my friends, uh, Artifakes, uh, Tabitha and Nick over at Artifakes, and they told me to get a specific type of latex. This is called Poly Latex 60. Now, I don't know if that's just a brand thing because it comes from Polytech, but if you go to, uh, if you go look up Poly Latex 60, you'll find it. Uh, we'll put a link in the show notes, obviously. Um, but this is the stuff that I'm using, and I went and got this five-gallon <laughs> giant thing. I split it with a friend. Um, this comes as sort of a paste. It's a very thick paste. So I just um, uh, thin it 50-50 by volume with distilled water, and then I use that to brush latex onto my foam props and also spray latex onto my foam props using a critter sprayer. So Poly Latex 60... Um, I'm not exactly sure what it is that makes this different than like balloon latex or slip casting latex or whatever. I do know that this stuff is great because I've used it a whole bunch. It's very durable. Um, you can brush a layer on, let it dry completely, brush another layer on, and it will bond. I think that's different than, uh, than balloon latex. It will actually bond between layers if you let it dry for a long time. 
Um, so there you go. That's the latex I use. Poly Latex 60. Missile Monkey in the chat says, When do you get to introduce yourself as Bill from Tested? Maybe maybe the next time I do a video, maybe I'll introduce myself as Bill from Punished Props and Tested. <laughs> Um, that's definitely, it's an exclusive club, and it's a club I'd like to be a part of. <laughs> Bill from Tested has a good ring to it. Um, let's see, that last one came in from, uh, Travis, and, uh, thank you for your question. And there's a note, oh my goodness. All right, let's, uh, hold on, hold the presses, is that what they say? Twitch... Push props. I got a thing. I got a, an announcement to make live. Do I? Uh, Britt just dropped a note in there. I don't see that. I don't see it on my side, Britt. There was a thing. We'll get back to you on that. There's a thing, an exciting thing, <laughs> but it's not showing up for me yet. So I'll get back to you on that. All right. Uh, cool. Next question comes to Boss Tolsama. Tolsma. I've been making foam costumes for a few months now, and I'm having a blast. Awesome. But I'm wondering how I can make more intricate patterns and designs like the patterns for Iron Man or Stormtroopers. That's a really good question. Um, something you might try. I can't remember specifically uh, who made them, but if you look on the replica prop forum, the RPF.com, and look for foam Iron Man Pepakura files... There are a couple of makers that, uh, um, oh, I have to, do I have to log out? Okay, I'll figure, I'll do that after this question, Britt. Um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, look up foam Pepecoro files, because um, there are uh, a handful of people who will make Pepecoro files for Iron Man suits, and specifically make them for foam. Now, I'm not saying that you have to use those files. You can totally just use those files to make your own Iron Man thing. But you could just look at them and kind of figure out how um, they're put together and kind of use that to educate yourself on how to make those templates for yourself. Uh, I, whenever I'm making templates, though, like Lord Shax, who's hiding right over there, um, it was all just trial and error. I have a, a foam torso for my own body. And I just draw the design right on there. Or I'll wrap it in masking tape and then draw the design on there and then peel it off or cut it up to make templates that way. Um, and then it's just trial and error. I make a piece, I glue it down, see how it looks. If I don't like it, I do it again. Lots and lots of trial and error. Uh, te template making is costume making. That's really what it is. That's really what it comes down to. Um, let me let me figure a thing out here. Oh, that last question came from Boss. Thank you for the question. And good luck with your Stormtrooper and or Iron Man costume. Um, I need to log out of this thing so I can show you guys the cool thing. I don't know how to do that. Up, oh, up. Oh, there we go. Log out. Cool. Don't play sound. Twitch. <laughs> All right. I'm going to figure this thing out, and then I'm going to show you guys something cool. There we go. Nope, don't don't play. Okay, cool. So, I'm going to switch over to this thing and show you something cool. Are you guys ready? Here's the thing. Ta -da! Uh, this is our Twitch page, twitch.tv slash punished props. It's where you guys are watching this from right now. And if you look very carefully just below my silly face here, you'll see a new thing. That's a subscribe button. That's freaking cool. That's That means that we are officially, Punished Props is officially partnered with Twitch. Hooray! And it's because, of course, you guys, it's because you guys keep showing up to watch us uh, that we've been able to uh, get partnered with Twitch, which is awesome. They look for um, the, me live streaming consistently, uh, which we've been doing, but they also look for people showing up, and because you guys keep showing up, then uh, we got partnered through Twitch, which is awesome. The way the subscribe button works is if you're watching on Twitch and you want to help us out a little bit, you can hit that subscribe button and contribute, I think it's $4.99 or $5 a month to 
to help throw some change our way. Uh, that gets split with Twitch uh, 50-50. So half of that goes to Twitch, half of it goes to us. Uh, it's a good way for them to make money to support their platform and for you to help us out. Uh, so that's a subscribe button, which is really cool. We might do like a, a new subscriber button party type of thing, live stream maybe tomorrow, which would be really fun. So look forward to that. Uh, yeah, so hype, subscribe. Uh, uh, how else does that go? Uh, partnership. Hooray! Awesome. Thanks, you guys. I see a lot of congrats in the chat. Thank you, guys. Really, though, it's it's because of you guys that we got that. Um, cool. All right, let's push forward. Next question comes to us from Brent. Brent, I'm going to take a sip of coffee here. Mm. Another quick thing about the subscribe button. There are little... If you look in the chat over here, people have cool little icons. Oop, let me... I am. Little emotes. And we get to make cool little emotes. So anyone who is a subscriber of ours gets to use those amazing little emotes. Brittany is already on the case. She's making some cute little emotes that you guys could use. Um, so that's a thing that's happening. <laughs> so keep... Uh, keep an eye on that. All right. Thanks again. Let's help out Brent. Brent is uh, about to share space in a shop for the first time. I was thinking of building a spray paint booth to paint my props in. Can you talk about your your spray booth and give any advice you have on design on the design or building one? All right. It depends on the space where you're working. So where I'm working, uh, it's my basement. So I don't really have to worry about OSHA or fire codes. I do want to do it in a safe way. Um, so I'll tell you how I did mine without any oversight. And then you can compare that to someone like Harrison Cricks, who does have to, he works in a commercial space and he needs to um, uphold to fire code and OSHA and all that other stuff. So he built a very elaborate, really amazing fire booth or fire booth, ha, <laughs> paint booth. And uh, I did not. Uh, but hey, Evil Ted is hosting us. Thanks, Ted. So ours is a room in our basement, and it is completely sealed off from the rest of the uh, the shop space. We have a uh, plastic uh, sheet or like oh, like a tarp, basically that that makes an overlap so that we can get into that room. It makes that its own tiny little room, and that also has a window that we have a giant box fan in and we'll put a filter behind that so that it, it, the filter catches all the spray particles that go through it. Um, and then basically we just hang stuff in front of that fan. And then when we spray stuff, uh, anything that goes beyond the thing we're painting gets sucked through that fan and blasted out the window instead of up in through my subfloor into my living room. Um, you can scale that way, way down. And in fact, you can get tiny spray booths that they make for model making. Um, I think Micromark has some of those if you want to check that out. Um, yes, hey, Patch, I also would like a fire booth. <laughs> um, and you can scale that way, way up to something like what Harrison has over at Vulpen Props. His has lighting and a fire suppression system and all kinds of really cool stuff. So... But the, the gist of a, a paint booth is to get fumes and particles away from, like, your face sucked through some sort of filter thing so that it's not up in the air. Uh, which means some sort of fan system, some sort of container, uh, like a box or a room or a booth to uh, keep all of the particulate contained. So, again, it all just depends on your scale and your uh, arrangement and whether or not you own the space where you live, whether or not it's commercial or residential. So there you go. Uh, there you go, Brent. All right. Cool. Keep on going. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Oh, Bio Cosplay is also hosting us. Thank you, Sam. Kormori uh, no Hime cosplay. I'm sorry, I don't know. I really have no idea how to pronounce uh, anime names. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's an anime name. Uh, after months of being inspired by your show, I finally went ahead and started writing my first cosplay sewing book. That's awesome. The current dilemma is about authorship. I usually post all my work under a cosplay handle to keep my online and personal life separate. 
I'm currently debating whether or not to put my real name as the author of the book. Do you have any thoughts on the subject? I'm thinking of selling it as an ebook in the future, if that makes any sense. That does make sense, or if it makes any difference. Sorry. Um, I don't think you have to worry about using your real name. I would, uh, whatever name you go by, you could just put that on there. Um, I mean, the, the the beauty of doing ebooks the way I've done them is that it's completely self published. You don't, you're not beholden to anyone. You can just, uh, you can promote it, publish it, sell it, however you want. Um, so if you're kind of known by your page's name or your company's name, just go with that, which is fine. And if, and it, obviously, if you want to keep a, a divide between your personal identity and your online identity, then you would want to do that. So I would say um, go with that. Uh, for me, I mean, uh, like me being a personality on the internet, being Bill, the cat's kind of out of the bag already. <laughs> there's no, there's no real in that bag. Everyone knows who I am, knows what my name is. Um, so I just, I just went with it. Uh, my book is by me, but I could, at some point I could have made it by punished props, but, um, yeah, just go with, go with the, what it, what's working for you. Go with your, uh, your page's name. You should be just fine. If, if it, and of course, if at any point, um, you're going to make like a, a deal with someone else or a publisher, um, you could figure something out with them. It's very common for authors to write books under what they would call a pen name not their name um so that's yeah yeah you got this you'll be fine next one comes from corium nine uh and there's some links that i'm opening okay let's see here You've long, you, me, Bill, has long championed this to that.com, and last year I stumbled on sizes.com as a resource for PVC and screw dimensions. Any other hidden gem type sites of this uh, you can think of? This is amazing! Holy crap! Alright, hold on. Let's open this thing. This is PVC pipe sizes, sizes.com. And these are different, actual different sizes of stuff for PVC pipe. And then these are different screw thread gauges. Holy crap, I'm going to bookmark both of these. This is amazing. Uh, well, we will provide uh, links to all of these in the show notes, obviously, but those are really great. I can't think of anything specific, anything else like that. I be- I'm willing to bet that sizes.com in general just has... Yeah, Uh, they've got a whole crap ton of stuff. Get a random quote that illustrates this site's big idea. Let's see here. Yeah, there's all kinds of crazy food and drink, numbers, time, calendars, people, clothing, all kinds of cool stuff. So I'm going to have to dive through there um, and see what else they have to offer. But uh, you guys should definitely check that out too. Um, The only other thing I can think of off the bat is for doing like um, volume measurements uh, if I look up if I just go to Google and look up volume of a cylinder it comes up with a form a formula right there so if I'm making a mold box out of a cylinder uh, and the, the radius is let's say five uh, centimeters and the height is 10 centimeters then the volume of that cylinder is 785 milliliters. This is something I use all the time, like like a lot. <laughs> Whenever I need to find the volume of something, I go to, I just type in volume of a blank, volume of a box, volume of a cylinder, volume of a sphere. Just type that into Google and they'll just crap out a, um, a bleh. Oh, they even show the whole solution. It just craps out a, uh, a form for you to fill out. It makes it super easy. I'll also look up um, res- uh, LED. Let's see, LED resistor resistor calculator. This place is really cool. Uh, it's LEDcalc.com. Is one of them. There's a there's a lot of different ones. Uh, boop. So uh, if you're trying to calculate the resistance of an LED, there's a calculator for that. If you just look up resistance of an LED or LED resistance calculator, it will 
um, it'll uh, find a thing for you like that. Oh, this one here. This is the one that I've used like that. So the voltage, let's say you have a 9 volt battery and uh, um, bleh, the diode forward voltage. So if your, your LED is like 2.2 volts and the current is 20 milliamps, find R. And then it's like, hey, that's the freaking resistor you need. So all kinds of calculators. Like when you were growing up and they're like, your math teacher said, you can't use a calculator on your test. Are you going to have a calculator with you every day of your life? It's like, yes, I am. I'm going to have all of the world's knowledge in my pocket. Every calculator, every formula I can just access instantaneously from a device in my pocket. And that's exactly what I do. <laughs> so there you go. Awesome links. Thank you very much, Corium9. Those are really good. Sizes.com for materials, PVC pipe and screw threads and everything. That's really great. Uh, next question comes to us from John. I'm looking to repaint a morph suit mask, polyester and spandex blend. Any advice on a paint that will work that is safe to wear on my face? Yes, there, yes, I do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come up, bring up an example for you of, of uh, when I did exactly that. I just have to find it. <laughs> when, uh, we did originally did our Draugr costumes, our Skyrim Deathlord Draugrs. Uh, where is it? There it is. Uh, we now use like rubber skull masks in them, but when we first did them, so see how these have like a skull mask in them. Um, you can see in this top picture here, they don't have a skull mask. Those are just painted right on the uh, morph suit. So if we zip way down, this is a really long build thread. Worth reading the whole thing. It's it's full of all kinds of fun. You can see we did all of the... These were just gray morph suits. Then we went in and painted all of the muscle tone on there. And that looks like my head is in my brother's butt, which is super fun. Um, I painted a smiley face on the junk because I'm a child. And you can see I painted right on the mask there. Uh, and then, and I got some paint on my brother's face, but that's okay. This is a, um, just an acrylic paint, uh, Createx, uh, Createx paint, createxcolors.com. Oops, copy, and I'll just throw that in the chat for you guys. Oh, and I'm not logged in. Great. Um, Createx colors, uh, they do really, really amazing paints uh, water-based paints, acrylics, they're really good for, uh, airbrushing, and the particular ones that we used, um, for that build were, uh, just their opaque ones, I think. Createx airbrush colors. Oh, there we go. Boop. All right. And let's take a peek over here. Yeah, they have all these really great colors, uh, transparent, pearlized additives, the opaque colors was were all we needed, just like black and white. Um, and we just airbrushed them on and then hit it with a heat gun to kind of set it to, so it dries really well. And then you can take the uh, whole uh, morph suit and just chuck it in the dryer for, you know, 10 minutes, warm it up a bit, really make sure that uh, that um, uh, paint really sets well. So there you go. Createx colors. Those are really great paints. Good for painting onto cloth, especially airbrushing onto cloth. You can brush it too. We did some brushing on the uh, the, the draugers too. That's actually, that's why my brother has paint on his face. Because to get all the detail around the skull and everything, I had to use a brush and, and uh, really kind of go to town <laughs> to get all the, the teeth detail. But there we go. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, that question came to us from John, and thank you for, uh, the question. Mm -mm -mm. I see Solo Roboto has hosted us. Thank you, Steven. Uh, I also see Evil Effects in the chat. Uh, hey, Dave. How you doing, man? All right. Next question comes to us from Joseph. He says, I recently bought your ebook, but still have questions regarding coating EVA foam. Recent, recently started using Monster Liquid Latex. However, sometimes when it sprays, it looks rough like sandpaper and sometimes appears 
to have pinholes as opposed to one smooth coating, even though I uh, use a heat gun to seal the foam prior. Um, that'll happen. Um, so I don't know. I used in the book, I used the monster latex because it's what I had on hand. The poly latex uh, 60 that I used before, I think I like that better. Um, when I do put latex on a prop, I will uh, brush the first couple layers on. Make sure that I get all of everything covered. Get all the nooks and crannies filled in. Um, the pinholes that you're talking about, I know exactly where you're talking about. Because when you spray it on, it'll cover and then kind of pull back into some little little pinpricks of uncovered areas. Um, let me see here. It's still There's still some of that going on on, on this guy as well. Uh, the best way you can do that is by putting a nice thick coat of latex on there, or many, many, many thick layers of latex. Um, if you can dunk it in latex, that will cover it for sure. Uh, let's see here. I think, I think that also has to do with um, the type of foam that you use. So what I'm seeing here is that these thin pieces here that were craft foam don't have any of that going on. And then this blade part here it's got a little bit of that pin, the pin pricks going on there so and i know those are two different types of foam i think this was plastizote and i think this was eva craft foam um so it might your results may differ with different types of foam too not all foams are created equal uh not all latexes are created equal um, what you might want to do is um, not thin your latex quite so much. I know that I think that monster latex stuff comes pre-thinned. So if you can get latex like the poly latex 60 that comes as more of a paste, um, you don't have to thin it quite so much. And then when you brush it on, it will cover a lot better. So there are a couple of things uh, for you to try. Let's see. Um, and Joseph also asked if there are significant differences between the rubber latex or the balloon rubber latex and the poly latex 60 and the monster liquid latex. I'm sure there are. I don't know what the technical differences are between them all, but I can say that I very much like the poly latex 60 um, the most. Um, and I and like I was saying before too, I think with the rubber, the balloon rubber latex, Ted, who's in the chat right now, was um, pointing out that uh, when you in his latex spraying video that you don't want to let the latex dry all the way before you put the, the next layer on with the balloon latex. With this stuff here, the poly latex 60, you can wait days between layers and it seems to be just fine. Uh, and that's how I did uh, this giant ax behind my head here, this thing. Boop. I see, oh, we also have TNT cosplay supply in the chat. Hello, you guys. I just ordered some foam from you. All right, that question came to us from Joseph. Uh, thank you, Joseph. Next question comes from Tranotaku64649. Nailed it. How would you make a telescopic staff? Hmm, that is a fantastic question. Usually whenever there's anything that's kind of mechanical that way, I'd like to build it on top of... Um, Something that already exists, something that already has all those mechanics in here. In fact, actually, uh, David, my buddy, uh, Evil Effects in the chat, had a really good example of this. Um, he made a uh, rifle from Destiny with a, I believe the stock like slid out, uh, slid back, kind of. It was really neat. And I'm pretty sure what he did was he took part of a cheap old. Um, uh, tripod and it's got a clip that you can unclip and then it'll slide out and then you can clip it down and it'll stay that way and he just just cut up a tripod and just use that one part of the leg uh, as part of the uh, the build there and then he just built foam pieces around it so you couldn't tell it was a uh, tripod anymore um, so start thinking that way like if you can get an old tripod and I'm looking around I don't have an I have a I have some good tripods that I don't want to cut apart. But if you go to like a secondhand store, you might be able to find a used one for a few bucks that you can cut apart. Yeah, Dave is confirming. An old camera tripod legs. Very, very elegant solution uh, to that that issue. Um, so just find a thing. Sometimes you can get tripod legs like that that don't have a clip on them. They just twist and then they'll slide and then you twist them again and they lock in place. For a, uh, for a staff where you don't want to have a lot of... 
uh, accessory bits showing, that might be a really good way to look at it too. So just shop around, maybe look on eBay for a used old one or look at a secondhand store. Or if you want to just go crazy, just go buy a brand new one. But some sort of a tripod leg that you could twist, slide out, twist back. That will totally solve your problem way easier than trying to build it from scratch yourself. Uh, Missile Monkey says you could technically try uh, dry fit PVC pipe. It just takes trial and error. Yeah, then you're kind of counting on having PVC pipe that fits just perfectly into one another. Um I try not to solve solutions that have already been solved <laughs> before, if you can. Um, yeah, a couple of people in the chat are talking about different different uh, sizes of PVC pipe. Yeah. If you're looking to experiment, then that's one way to do it. Uh, all right, cool. Let's keep rolling here. I tried it at home. It says telescopions. <laughs> Thank you, Tranotaku4649. Kagar. There's a nice, easy to read name. <laughs> Kagar says, uh, do you ever feel a lack of inspiration or drive? Or how do you get over it and back to work? Right here. Coffee. Just drink ridiculous amounts of coffee. You'll never have any problem getting back to work. Um, I always have deadlines either by whoever is trying to uh, hire me or by myself. I always set deadlines so that things get done. So we committed to doing um, a new video on our YouTube channel every single Monday. Uh, And since we committed to that, then we just do it. Uh, It's a deadline that we put upon ourselves and, and we haven't missed one since, I don't think. So yeah, just give yourself deadlines. Uh, And then commit to finishing them i don't know <laughs> i don't know uh how else to to, to put it though but I, I never feel like i'm i'm like lacking for the inspiration or or whatever the push to finish something because it just has to get done i i never give myself a plan b <laughs> uh and the other question kagar has is for 3d props do you use a program for cutting a prop or just design the cuts into it have you ever used simplify 3d I do use Simplify 3D and I like it very much. Um, when I'm uh, when I'm uh, designing the the pieces, when I'm 3D modeling them and designing them, I just design them so that I know that each piece will definitely fit inside the print volume of my printer. I've never uh, I've never tried to print anything really big yet. I do want to print something big, like a big rifle or something, and I want to print it with that printer. I just need to. Uh, uh, I'll have to figure out how to cut it into different parts so that they all fit together all nice like. Um, and I would do all of that design work bef- in the 3D model before sending it over to my slicing software. Um, that's just me. I would rather do it that way. And in fact, I could design those parts in a way that it would fit on most 3D printers. So if other people wanted to print it or if I wanted to print it on a different printer, then I wouldn't have to send it through the slicing software again. I could just crap out an SDL throw it in a Simplify 3D or Cura or whatever slicing software people are going to use. And I know that it would work. And I know that once all those pieces are printed, they would lock back together again. Um, yeah, but I really do like Simplify 3D. It's really awesome. Um, cool. Let's keep rolling here. We have a few more questions in our doc. I see people throwing questions in the chat too. Um, I'll keep... Hold on to those until I run out of these ones that we got earlier today. And then we'll grab some more from you guys. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, Second Nature FX, one of our regulars, wants to know, when taking progress pics of a large prop, would it be better to use a white backdrop in the progress pictures or should that only be for the finished prop? If you want, if you have like an area that you can keep clean and you can take progress pictures in that area, go for it. I never have an area that stays clean like that. But that's just me. Um, I just use, usually, I mean, if you watch my progress photos, you'll see, um, you'll see I've got my big cutting mat, um, with my tools in the background. That's where I work all day. And I just sort of clean everything out of the way and, or not clean, just shove everything to the side. And when I'm taking a progress photo, I will put the piece on the cutting mat and take a picture of it. I don't know that progress photos need to be super pretty. Um, I have decent lights above that part of the workbench, so it looks all right. Um, but I usually don't try and take a really pretty photo until it's done. 
that's just me though. Again, if you can have like a photo area that stays clean always where you can put progress photos and go for it. I don't think I don't think people are going to going to ding you for for not doing that though. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Second Nature Effects. Next one comes from Vadim. Vadim? How do I make custom shoes? I'm making Tracer cosplay now, and I need custom shoes. Actually, I think... Let me just double check here. Um... Did they change the name? No. Yes, they did. GSTQ. GSTQ Fashions, God Save the Queen Fashions, over on, look her up on Facebook. Um, that's per, This is like the perfect thing for you. If you look up God Save the Queen Fashions on Facebook, you'll find that a recent post was how they made tracer shoes. How perfect is that? Um, so essentially... The uh, there was a real shoe, and this is how I do my shoes for costumes. I'll I keep my old like walking shoes, old sneakers, and I will use them as a base for a costume shoe. And then in this case, they just put pieces of foam around it to make the shoe, to make the custom looking shoe. And then they painted that foam. Um, I mean, as far as the specifics of the, the pattern and the design and everything, you're going to have to kind of trial and error that yourself. But if you go over to GSDQ Fashions over on uh, Facebook, you'll see this perfect picture here uh, with a really great uh, little write-up on it. So head on over there, check that out. But essentially, you just get a real shoe, you glue foam to that. You got yourself a nice custom shoe. Um, there we go. That question came to us from Vadim. Vadim? And, uh, thank you. Thank you for the question. That's a good one. I have, um, what was it? My shepherd boots are some rubber galoshes. Some, like, uh, cement galoshes from the hardware store. Just glued a bunch of foam to that. Mm. And then my, um, my Draugr shoes are old, uh, um, uh, were they? Old vans actually an old pair of vans again with a bunch of uh uh um, a bunch of foam stuck to them yeah all right let's keep rolling <laughs> we got a question we got a question from our buddy i can i can't pronounce that <laughs> which if you caught the live stream yesterday is one of our smart ass uh prop tarts <laughs> who made that name just to mock the fact that I can't pronounce names. But thank you, you wise guy. Uh, what are some tools I should buy for starting out at building foam props and armor? That's a wonderful question. Uh, in fact, I probably have... <laughs> I probably have a, a, a write-up on that on PunishProps.com. If you head over to PunishProps.com, go to Tools and Materials, and go to Foamsmith Tools and Materials, here's a really good list right there uh, with links to all of the stuff uh, that I like to use for foam smithing. And these are all Amazon affiliate links, which is really great. If you use them, that helps us out a whole bunch because we get a tiny get, tiny cut of all those purchases. Um, but I'll give you a quick rundown. We've got some things like a knife and a knife sharpener. Uh, you can get most of what you need done with just a knife, a sharp knife, and a knife sharpener or a bunch of replacement blades. Uh, hot glue gun is pretty essential. Super glue is really good. Uh, a rotary tool, a Dremel rotary tool or a Craftsman rotary tool or whatever rotary tool you can find. Um, that's going to help you out a whole bunch uh, as well. So uh, there you go. Basic foam making uh, tools. Head on over to PunishedProps.com. Tools and materials. And go to Foamsmith Tools and Materials. Thank you. I can't pronounce that. All right. Let's keep rolling here. D creation. Do you have, uh, do you know anyone who has videos or helpful tips for doing a simple makeup like Borderlands? You know what? I bet I do. Let me, let me check right now. Um, because I have a friend who does Borderlands costumes who's been on this show before. I just don't know if she did a makeup thing. Let's take a look. <laughs> Videos, um, let me, I don't see anything, I find it hard to believe she hasn't done this, done that specific video. Yes, yes, here we go, found it. 
Yep, I'm glad I have an ad there. All right, I'm going to let that ad play, but I'm going to drop this link in the uh, chat. You guys can check that out. I'm also going to put it in the show notes so that we have it for later. My friend May Morrison, who has been on this show before because she's awesome, uh, did a video on uh, doing makeup for Maya the Siren from Borderlands. And she looks terrifying in that (laughs) video. But it's... uh, Let's see, a 17-minute long video tutorial on doing makeup for a Borderlands character. So, if you want to uh, learn how it's done, then that's the way to do it. So, I believe I've answered exactly what you uh, asked. So, uh, go check that out. (laughs) Go check out May's video. Let's see, that was uh, Decreation. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly the thing. Perfect. Go watch that video. Next question comes from Tried It at Home. I'm thinking about making a dead World of Warcraft orc skeleton to go with the Alliance PvP weapon I made, but I'm drawing a blank as to what I can use to make or bend the ribcage out of without going too elaborate. Any ideas? Uh, foam? <laughs> Are you surprised I said anything else? Um, you could take a, a couple p- thin pieces of foam and put uh, like a hanger wire, uh, sandwich it between them, and then that thin piece of foam can be bent into any shape. Um, so you could bend it around into a rib, cape, rib cage shape, and it'll be a little bit flexible too. Um, so uh, yeah, that's kind of the way I would probably do it. You could just build a bunch of ribs, they'd be kind of flat. Um, you could shape them a little bit like with a Dremel to make them a little bit more organic looking and then just two pieces same with a, with a thin wire um, uh, like a hanger wire or armature wire uh, sandwich between them and then you can pose them however you want uh, which is really good ta-da alright thank you tried it at home alright we have one more question here from Hey Patch. then I'll grab some questions from the chat so get some questions some short questions like 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 yes or no questions or like uh, like, uh, I don't know, get some questions going in the chat, some rapid fire questions for me uh, after I answer Hey Patch's question. Uh, Bill has the, I should be filming this thought ever got in the way of making something. I have so many things I want to make, but feel I should be making a video of that gets in the way. Um, I film just about everything I make. So, um, that's just kind of how it goes. <laughs> I just, I'm, it's, this is the life I chose for myself. So everything I make, if I'm not filming it, if I'm not live streaming it, if I'm not making a book about it, then it's kind of like a, a, a I guess, a wasted opportunity. Um, I make my living from the content that I produce. So if I'm not making content from the things I produ- I, I build, then I'm kind of missing out on a chance to uh, to build some of that. But that's just me. I mean, I mean, you don't have to, <laughs> but if your ability to pay rent counts on you putting out good content then you suddenly (laughs) suddenly you're inspired to film everything you make but again that's me it doesn't have to be you that's fine um all right uh that was all our questions from earlier we have about 10 minutes left i'm going to start grabbing some quick questions from you guys in the chat phoenix revival says what's in that bag in the background on the table let's find out a human head! No, it's not. Uh, this is my camera bag. This is a Domkey, uh, really cool looking uh, camera bag. It fell in the ocean with all my camera gear. The camera gear died, but the bag's doing fine. Uh, there is actually no cameras in here right now. But um, uh, it's not here. No, wait, there it is. Brittany has the matching one. Isn't it adorable? It's actually my old one. I upgraded. Grab some more quick questions. How do you make a non-leather jacket look like leather? I want uh, want to make a Soldier 76 cosplay. Um, you might want to just use some leather paint on it. Um, do some tests. Obviously, lots of tests. Uh, but getting that shine is going to be kind of tricky. You're going to want to make it from something that's already pretty close. Maybe vinyl. Uh, Dagger Elk. What kind of finish or texture does latex leave on foam when applied with a foam brush? Um, it really depends on... The texture of the foam where it got started, you can see that it's muted all of the texture on there, but it's still kind of there. So it really depends on how smooth you get your foam beforehand. Uh, Rainbow Sprinkles. Have you ever worked with a polymer clay for smaller details on props? I'm working on a Master Sword. I've already 
uh, have a lot of it because I like to make miniatures. I was wondering if it would hold up at a convention. I'm not really sure. Um, I don't... Um, not sure what polymer clay is specifically. Is that like... Sculpey? Maybe that's Sculpey. Um, usually if I'm going to do anything like that, I would use that to make the master and then mold and cast that out of urethane to be a little bit more uh, durable. That's the way I would do it. Angie Piper says, when do you uh, think the new Foamsmith books will be sent out? We have, that's a good question. Uh, apparently, they are getting mailed to us tomorrow. So they're not going to get here. To, like a thousand books are getting shipped to us and then we will start mailing them out. And they're getting shipped from Canada tomorrow to come here. So that, there's the Foamsmith 2 uh, print book uh, update. <laughs> the, the, the shorter answer is soon. D Creations, what's Bill's favorite color? Uh, it's This looks gray, but it's blue. This sort of darker blue. This is a little dark, but I, I tend to lean towards blue. All right, Corsac Props. Any suggestions for making scabbards? I'll be making an MDF sword, but uh, build soon. And I was wondering if foam would be better or MDF for it. If you're going to be carrying it around, I might go with foam. MDF just gets really, really heavy. Um, but they, they'll both work. They, they're both good. Um, H M A L Melco. Uh, the Gordon Freeman guy. He got his gravity gun. Really, really cool. Um, can you explain how to transform a Peppercorn model to foam? Card stop seem doesn't seem to unfold really well. Um, so with foam, you have to consider the thickness of it so a normal pepicora model is designed for cardstock if you're going to transfer that to foam you may have to fudge the edges make it a little bit bigger because the thickness isn't uh into taken into account uh, some people like i was mentioning earlier on the stream with their iron man pepicora files will make them specifically for foam um, but if you have pep files that aren't then just keep that in mind uh, let's see here. Uh, Apara says, I saw a tested uh, method to cool off an armor. What's your preferred method to keep cool? Uh, drink lots of water and try not to stay in your armor very long. <laughs> that's that's all I've ever done so far. Uh, Lord Shax is a freaking sweat tube because my whole body's in foam, my whole torso. So as soon as I, start, I put that on, I start to sweat like crazy. I have like moisture wicking... Um, like Under Armour shirt underneath, uh, but I just drink tons and tons of water. Um, what's crazy is when you drink that much water and you don't pee, that means it's all coming out of sweat on your back, which is gross. Uh, I am actually coming up with, uh, going to try some new cooling methods for the next costume I do for San Diego Comic-Con, um, but I haven't fully developed those yet, but I'll, I'll try some new stuff. Uh, Jacob Cleo? says, what was the Dremel incident your brother talked about in his Bill cosplay video? When I got my new um, uh, rotary tool, I got the Fordham rotary tool. It's That thing's a monster compared to... Uh, um, it's like a one-third horsepower. It's, it's a beast compared to a normal Dremel tool. And I was using it, and it caught on my, uh, my shirt, just the pocket of my uh, uh, shop hoodie, and it just ripped a hole right into it. That was the incident. <laughs> Uh, Avenger, uh, talking about his scabbard. Yes, MDF is heavy. I recently made an axe from RuneScape, uh, from MDF. Estimated weighed 20 pounds. Yeah, if I make stuff out of MDF, usually I'm going to mold and cast it out of something lighter. Uh, let's see. Lil M. Magoo? Lil M. Do you have any tips for my first costume? I'm making a Destiny Warlock. Sure, go look up, um, look up Gary Sturley. Uh, Gary Sturley Studios. Look him up on... I'll put a link in the chat there. Uh, look him up on the old uh, Facebook page. Go to his albums. And I believe he's got his whole uh, Destiny Warlock. Yeah. So if we look up... Um, let's do that. There. Boop. Bloop, bloop. Okay. He's got a whole album devoted to his destiny warlock including the helmet which was done in peppercura and molded and cast uh, and a bunch of other cool stuff so there's like the mock-up for his coat um yeah go see how gary did his and then just copy him <laughs> all right let's grab a couple more of these before we head out uh jk 
JPK uh, says, what's a tool you thought you could live without having until you had it? I'm actually surprised it took me as long as it did to get a bandsaw. Um, once I got a bandsaw, I almost immediately got a second bandsaw because it's so useful. So go get a bandsaw. Uh, Hamo Rex says, uh, I'm making the Fire Nation soldier. Just wondering for the faceplate for the helmet. Should I use magnets or Velcro? A lot of times with helmets, I've found that magnets tend to be a better solution. Um, and especially if you're making it out of foam, you'd be surprised how small a magnet will hold it in place. Um, yeah, I would definitely go with magnets on that. Angie Piper says, thank you for the suggesting Epsilon, my new Iron Man suit. It worked a treat. That's fantastic. That's good for Iron Man. If you want a really nice smooth surface on there, you can use that. a lot of that Epsilon, get a nice rigid hard shell, and sand it down to a nice smooth surface. Okay, I, th- I think I handled, handled all those questions coming in right at the last couple minutes there. So I think we're going to wrap it up. But thank you guys for bringing those questions. Thanks for showing up to the chat uh, for the live stream and thank you also again for sh- continuing to show up to these live streams consistently because of you guys twitch was like hey we want to be a partner with you we think we're you're cool um we might stream we'll keep you up to date but we might stream again tomorrow to do like a hey we're partnered uh sort of thing something a little more casual um i'm not sure if we have anything else going on tomorrow but if we don't then Brittany and i will do something like that which would be really fun so i'll possibly look forward to that check us out on uh punish props on um facebook and on uh chimbeard on twitter somewhere along there we'll we'll post about it uh other than that next weekend one week from now uh, I will be at Maker Fair, the Bay Area Maker Fair, once again. And I'm just going to be running around like a crazy person. I'm not doing any panels or anything. I'm just checking out Maker Fair. I'll be have this hat on and I'll have this beard on. So look for me if you're going to be there. Um, and what else is there to say? I think I covered just about everything. So that's that. That is the end of Prop Live Q&A for this week. Uh, thank you for showing up. And we will do this again one week from now. Uh, but until then, go out there, work on your awesome props and costumes, uh, be safe, enjoy yourself, and have a great weekend. I'll see you all later. This is Bill, signing out.